but what do we do? Okay, we recognize sin in us or, or shame in us, and we recognize maybe somebody stuck in a cycle of shame that we love very much. Jim, you've mentioned a couple things. Don't say, um, what were you thinking? I think that's a really good, helpful, practical tip. But what do we do? And I'd love to hear both from Joel and Jim on this. What do we do when Joel. shame is very present? Yeah, I, I would say let's listen to what Paul says. And um, this might be helpful, Ephesians 4. Uh, and I think it's important to understand what's happening in the city of Ephesus. Uh, the Temple of Artemis is there. It's one of the wonders of the world. This is a place when we talk about all these things, I mean, debauchery and fornication and drug addiction. I mean, this was rampant. In, yeah. uh, in the Temple of Artemis. Nothing new under the sun, There ain't right? nothing new <laughs> underneath the sun. Uh, we've been turning to the same vices uh, for, for ages, since the beginning, and yet there's a virtue uh, that God has given us that we should seek after. And this is how Paul describes it. And what Paul is doing is really summarizing what we've been talking about, this idea that, and we're gonna talk about it more later, there is an old self that is associated with a dark way of living um, that is bent on self-glorification, which is ultimately self-hatred. I'm curious what you think about I that. Totally but that's totally agree. Kind of what I think, right? That's where it ends, yeah. Like, we think we're glorifying ourselves, but actually we're at, it's an active hatred hatred, yeah. of self-hatred. And so it's so it's so intriguing. But this is what Paul says, and he starts in verse 22. Okay, he, what chapter are we in? Ephesians chapter 4. Okay. I would definitely suggest you read verses 17 through 22. He talks about the futility of our minds. We were once darkened in our understanding. We were alienated from the life of God. So that is our past sense. But then in verse 22, he says this, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through what? Deceitful desires. And to be renewed, so we were once corrupt, but to be renewed in what? The spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after what? The likeness of God, in true righteousness and holiness. And I think this is the very practical and unexpected, how do we do this? Therefore, Having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. And so I do really believe what Paul is getting at here is, in a sense, what do we do? We do what we've just done. We have to identify the falsehoods. We've got to name them for yes. what they are. We've got to see them for what they are. Um, one of the things I've learned, Jim, from you and from Lisa is actually tangibly sometimes writing these things things out so you can visibly see them. But I also see this other great principle that Paul is getting at. And the principle is we were not meant to do this alone. To be a part of the family of God is to be surrounded with brothers and sisters that can speak the truth of the gospel into your life. What is the truth of the gospel? That you are not your worst moment right? You are not your best moment. That's good. Like, yeah. like you are a reflection of Christ on the cross and his victory over sin and death. And so just very tangibly being in relationship. And so I would just say and suggest if you find yourself isolated from the family of God, that is one indication, one tangible step to fight aggressively, to be connected to the family of God. And that typically happens within the local church. And Joel, it's not just about going to church, although that is important, but if we go and we're just sitting on the last row or you know, in that last uh, section of seats and we're not ever connecting yes. personally with people, then we're kind of missing mm -hmm. what's so important here, and that is connection. And Jim, you've taught me this, it's really about intimacy and it's having someone close enough or a group of people close enough where you feel safe enough to have into me you see intimacy and you know it's not that we want to be completely naked with someone but it's that we want to have an opportunity with people to see the stripped down version of us the the part of us without the performance without the pretense without all the accolades and without all the props you know it's just the stripped down version of me emotionally and maybe spiritually that you allow them to see naked we came into this world naked we'll go out of this world but vulnerability even though we wear clothes but vulnerability is what really provides intimacy. So Joel, what you're saying is having those connections biblically 
is part of how we can get out of isolation, which isolation, it seems like, is kind of feeding into the shame and continuing the cycle of shame. Yeah, and I would just say very practically too, when you have that level of connectivity and intimacy, uh, we've been working together long enough where we could say, hey, I kind of, understand that you have this tell and you're beginning to work down this spiral and that's that that intersection that we have responsibilities brothers and sisters in Christ to be able to speak truth in love in those moments um, in a way that if I am isolated I'm not going to be able to see those on my own I'm just going to keep going down that that black hole and so yeah and sometimes I think shame sneaks out in snarky comments people make about themselves and others oh. No you question. Know? And so sometimes I think if you're in a safe, more intimate friendship with someone, you can have the opportunity to say, stop that thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like take that thought or I'll see them um, or I can even find myself being resistant to take a compliment. Because it's almost like me saying, oh, if you really knew me, you would never say something so nice. So sometimes when I see people resisting a compliment that I give them, I'll say, no, I want you to take that compliment. Yes. I want you to put mm -hmm. it right here on your chest. I want you to rub it in and let it sink in Love that. because it's truth. And the resistance that you're feeling right now is because the truth I'm speaking over you is bumping into a lie that you're carrying inside. Oof. And you need to make room for the truth by uninviting the lie from inside of you. Love it. Yeah.